So before automation processes in the 1950s, all of the handwork, all of the work involved in making Jacob's Biscuits was done by hand. This is a price list from the 1920s, and in it you can see that the biscuits themselves are far more decorative than they are today. There are piped patterns, there are stenciled patterns, there are um, designs with different colours of icing, um, and there are the sandwich biscuits and the mallow biscuits and all of the other ones that required handwork. All of this work was done by women, by the women workers. And Jacobs employed almost twice as many women as they did men because this was so labour intensive. Not only were they decorating the biscuits, as you can see here, but they were also packing them. And this was a very skilled task indeed. Without plastic vacuum formed inserts for boxes, everything had to be packed with um, fluted greaseproof paper uh, to, to, to keep everything safe and unbroken. Jacob's products, like the confiserie tin here from the 1930s, relied very much on their visual attractiveness for sales. As you can see, the label here shows very clearly how decorative these little edible objects were. And the stencil here in front of the box uh, shows the J monogram that was stenciled in icing onto the Café Noir biscuits. Behind that, there is the little icing nozzle that was used for piping onto the, the biscuits and a little mould for the confiseries themselves. So the, these would have been used as trial biscuits, uh, trial biscuit cutters, to stamp out um, a trial run of biscuits before the large rollers used for mass production were commissioned from the manufacturers. And you can see, if you can read backwards, um, you can see Mary on this one here, and there's oval rich tea here in the front, and there's also family biscuits, and one of the crackers here at the back. These are very cleverly constructed. As you can see, there was a little plate at the back that slid forward to um, push the dough off once it was stamped out.